Hi, today I'm going to cover how I converted my old pre-lit Christmas tree to upgrade the LED lights and add WLED for hundreds of different effects. And this year, I'm actually going to attempt to upgrade this tree to use an ESP32 and sound reactive WLED. I might have a couple of friends that hung around since Halloween to come in to help me test that at the end. Hi, welcome to Resin Chem Tech. Next month it will be one year since I released my first public YouTube video. And that really was just a three minute highlight video of my Christmas tree with some background music that showed off the different WLED effects when I replaced all of the lights on my tree. At that time I never really thought I was going to start a YouTube channel. But I want to sincerely thank those of you out there who have subscribed to my channel and been kind enough to make comments and provide feedback. I really hope to continue to make videos for this channel. But for my one year anniversary, I thought I would go back, take a look and show you how I put this tree together, how it's designed so it can easily be taken apart and stored uh, after the holidays. And also this year, I want to try to upgrade this tree to the new sound reactive WLED so that I can have the lights react to music. So my Christmas tree originally came pre-lit with these uh, little Christmas lights that I'm sure you're all familiar with. It also came with a fancy remote that allowed it to turn on the white or the clear lights, multicolored lights, or both. Um, that was pretty much the extent of the effects you could have with the tree. And when some of those, when some of these lights begin to fail, I decided it was time to rewire the tree. Well, to do that, I definitely wanted more than just the clear and the multicolored. Having messed with WLED, I thought, mm, maybe I can use WLED on this Christmas tree. But it was going to require something a little bit different than the normal WS2812 LED strips that I had been using before. So after doing a little bit of research, I opted to go with these 12 volt WS2811 pixel bullet style uh, pixels. Now, why did I go? with the 12 volt when my controller was 5 volt and everything else I've done is always 5 volt? Well, because the 12 volt is going to require less power injection. And I didn't go with 500 of these, and you'll notice that they're not cheap. Um, but it's cheaper than buying a new Christmas tree, and 500 was about the right number to cover my 7 foot tall Christmas tree. So before we look at how the tree is actually wired, let's take a look at the controller and the power supply. So here's the controller. It's pretty basic. This is our 12 volt power supply. Again, we're using uh, 12 volt uh, WS2811 uh, pixels on our tree, so we need a 12 volt power supply. I opt to just use a couple terminal blocks here just to try to keep things neat and organized. You'll notice we have two 12 volt leads coming off of here. One's going to power uh, the bottom of our pixel string, and we're also gonna do power injection at the, at the top or the end of that pixel string as well. Running power to our controller, I'm going to talk about this controller in a minute because as most of you probably know if you've watched any of my other videos, the controller itself runs off of 5 volts. So we'll talk about this in a second. But here's our green signal for our LEDs coming off of our controller. I opted to mount everything on a piece of scrap wood. I think this is a half inch MDF board. It was left over from my arcade machine. But it makes it nice because I can just pick this thing up, store it in a box for next year. And this, of course, is our AC power in. So the controller is pretty simple. Let's take a closer look at this controller though. Okay, so here's a closer look at the controller itself. And you'll notice right on top is my favorite board, the Wemos D1 Mini, but it's mounted on this other controller board. I'm gonna pop this off so you can see it a little bit better. This board underneath here is called a Quinn LED Dig Uno. And it's really kind of an all-in-one solution for controlling your LED lights. Um, for one thing, if you recall, we're powering our our lights off of a 12 volt power supply, but the Wemos D1 Mini uh, will only take five volts. So this has a nice DC to DC converter on board that will step down that 12 volts to the five volts needed to power this. And really all you have to do is plug in your power and connect up your signal to your, to your LEDs. It has an onboard logic level shifter as well. To give you a little better idea, let's pop over here real quick. This is Quindor's website or quinled.info and I'll leave a link down in the video description. Uh, but you can see it's got a lot of nice features. This is a newer version than I've got. It comes with an ESP32 instead of an ESP8266. But you'll notice it has the, uh, again, 
a 5 volt, 12 volt DC converter. I believe this new version will take anything between 5 volts and 24 volts. Uh, obviously, it has a fuse and some other safety features. Problem with, with the uh, Dig Unos or the, the Quinn LED boards is that they are extremely hard to come by, especially at this time of year. Uh, here in the US, you would order from Dr. Z's site. If we go over and look at this, you'll see the boards are not extremely cheap. They're, they're cheap for everything that you're getting, between $30 and $40, but out of stock. And so it is possible to build your own if you can't get a, a Quinn board or want to build your own. And I've got a separate video on building your own um, WLED controller for about $6 using the D1 Mini. However, if you are using 12 volts uh, strips, you will need to find a way to, to either step down that 12 volts to 5 volts via a step down buck converter, or you could power this off a separate 5 volt power supply. But remember, you do need a common ground between uh, your D1 Mini or your controller and your LED strip. So you'd have to add that as well. So this is the original version that came with a Wemos D1 Mini and ESP8266, but this year I'm going to upgrade that to the ESP32 because I want to add sound reaction to my Christmas tree. I want the Christmas tree to be able to dance to the music. And to do that, you really need the ESP32. You can do it with the ESP8266, but you're going to get better performance and more effects out of the ESP32. I have another video that actually compares these two processors when used with WLED, and you can see why from that video why you want to use the ESP32. The nice part is that this will actually, if you notice these white uh, outlined pins, those are the D1 mini pins. So this will barely fit onto this board. And there are, Quindor was nice enough to provide his pin out. So there's a pin out here for a microphone and a 3.3 and 5 volt, or 3.3 and ground that we can hook up our microphone to. and make the Christmas tree dance to music. So we're gonna start out, we'll go ahead and use the D1 Mini with standard WLED, but then I'm gonna swap that out later in the video and see how, how we can do with uh, making a Christmas tree sound reactive. Okay, so that takes care of the controller. Let's move on with how the tree is put together and how the lights and power are wired in the tree. As you can see, my tree comes in three separate sections which are meant to be taken apart for storage. So if I wanted my LED strings to be permanently installed like the other pre-lit version because I did not want to take those lights off and reinstall them every year because to be honest one of the most difficult parts and time-consuming parts of this whole project were getting the lights originally spaced out on the tree between the three sections and trying to get the spacing between the rows as even as possible so the effects would look proper with, with WLED. So to do that there are two connections between each section. One are the pixel strips or pixel strings themselves and the other one is our 12 volt power supply that we're going to run up the center of the pole of the tree to do power injection at the very top. Okay, so you can see what I've done here is I've placed a piece of yellow tape at the top of this post on the bottom section. And I've placed an arrow on there. The reason why is when I put the next section on, I want to line up these arrows to be sure that I'm twisted left to right. Again, that's not only to keep the pattern consistent, but also to line up my connection between the LED strips. And here is my power connection. So going to attempt here, I can do this while I'm filming, go ahead and take this next section. I'm going to find my yellow tape. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this. And drop that in there and do my best if I can move these branches out of the way if you can see. Really what I've done in there is I've, focus is not going to want to work, is I've lined up my yellow arrows. That should also line up my two power supplies which again, you may or may not be able to see here, but I'm just taking those wiring harness, two pin wiring harnesses and connecting them together. I'll move this back just a little bit. So that gives us our power connection between the two sections. And then all I need to do is find the JST connectors I've marked with yellow tape between the two sections. And I'm simply going to connect the two of those together, snap those together and they only fit one way. There you go. And that's now going to connect our LED uh, strings between the bottom section and the top and this middle section. Now I just repeat that same process for the top. If I can get it up here at the very, very top, you can see where those power wires come out. And I'm actually just using a couple of Wago clips to connect that to the uh, very top of the LED string. And that provides our 12-volt 
12 volt power injection into the top of our tree. So now at this point, the only thing left to do is to connect our controller to the input wiring at the bottom of the tree. Okay, not quite sure how well I can film this, but our final connections are going to be, again, our 12 volt power and our connection to our LED strings. And again, those are coming from the power supply that I covered earlier. Simply come along and we make one connection at the bottom there for our 12 volts that are going to run to the top of the tree and then our connection to our very beginning of our LED strings. Okay, let's fire up WLED and see how we did. All right, there we go. And I thought I'd just quickly throw up this diagram. I actually keep this, keep this with the controller, but it summarizes the connections that you have to make. As you can see, there are only six connections that have to be made to put the tree together or take it apart. This diagram, along with the wiring diagrams and parts list, are all in a related blog article, and I'll leave a link to that down in the video description. Okay, once you have all of your pixels installed, and you've got things spaced out, and things look good with WLED, you're going to want to attach those strings to the tree permanently so that you don't have to take them off and put them back on. At least that's what I wanted to do. And to do that, I was able to take these little clips. I don't know how well you can see those, but those were actually what held these, those old lights onto the tree. So I was able to take these off and reuse these to basically clip over the wire of my pixel string and then clip these onto the branches of the tree. If you don't have any of these available, obviously you could use some green or black, very small zip ties and zip tie your cords on to the branches of the tree. And again, since this is integrated natively into Home Assistant, you can also create automations, at least in terms of, you know, time that the tree were to come on, turn off. You can actually set the effects uh, via automation as well. But of course, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna stop there. This year, I want to add that Sound Reactive version. So, I'm, okay, for the Sound Reactive version, I've replaced the Wemos D1 Mini with the ESP32 that has Sound Reactive WLED loaded on it. I've also hooked up an external microphone, uh, the Max 9814, to those external pins on the uh, DigiNo board. And I've brought in a couple of helpers here, so let's fire up some music and see how we do. Why this plays in the background, I'll just give you a little bit more information. First of all, the sound reactive effects you're seeing on the tree right now, I just set up a simple playlist in WLED. These are not at all optimized, so you have the option uh, to adjust the gain and the squelch on the microphone, to change the intensity, to change the speed, to change the colors, to change the frequencies. I really haven't done any of that. These are pretty much out of the box effects. So you can definitely tweak these effects to make them better. Now with the sound reactive version of WLED, you get a, more than 25 different sound reactive effects and you're only seeing again just a handful of those here. In addition to those, you are also getting uh, hundreds of different standard effects with WLED that aren't sound reactive. And you'll notice a couple of other props in, in the video. Uh, first are the uh, moving props to the left or right. Those are my repurposed Halloween props. Um, Santa now plays Jingle Bells and the elf plays You're Mean When Mr. Grinch. Those can be motion activated or uh, controlled through Home Assistant. The small little LED strips there are miniaturized versions of my LED floor lamps. Again, you can check both of those out in my other videos if you're interested. So my total cost for the tree all in was about $250. Most of that in the LED strips, which were about $175. That is using the Digi Uno if you can manage to get one. And if you do, let Quindor or Dr. Z's know that Resin Chem Tech sent you. And as a reminder, I will provide a link down in the video description to a related blog that has all of the diagrams, all the parts used, schematics of how everything is put together. So be sure to check that out. So the last thing I have to do is take this tree, move it upstairs, put it in its location for the holidays, and start to enjoy a very merry WLED Christmas. So that's going to do it for this video. 
If you found anything that you like or anything you found useful, please hit that like button down below. That lets both me and YouTube know you'd like to see more videos like this. If you'd like to see more of my videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ding that little bell icon if you want to be notified when I release a new video. I want to wish everyone a very happy holiday. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas!